Shalom. Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shah, Call Halayum, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Raka Kodash. Double honor to the men who taught me this truth, the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone, who rule well and teach well. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect that's doing the work of our Lord and our Savior, Yahweh Shah, and all fear, Shalom. Welcome to the frying pan. Contrary to popular belief of Christianity, when you come to serve the Lord, you're going to prosper. All right. Which is a false doctrine, according to the King James Version, something that your great grandfather and your great grandmother imputed in your minds through the generations of you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans to believe that you're going to prosper when you come to serve the Lord. All right. Which is not so. Welcome to the frying pan. If you really serve in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. And that's the gauge set up right there to let you know that these wicked people of the world are going off because they are not serving Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah for real because they're prospering. All right, example, your, your, your famous pastors. Okay, that this is in this society right now. All right, they're prospering to the fullest, uh, spread in false doctrines. Okay, the scripture says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Yeah, prepare thy soul to catch hell. All right, welcome to the frying pan if you're really, um, sincerely serving Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. All right, verse two, set thine heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste. In time of trouble. Why? Because once you are in this thing of ours, as the Apostle Gabar says, all right, you're going to get tried, okay, on all levels. And some trials that brothers go through are different than other brothers' trials. Verse 3, cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou may be increased at thy last end. So when you're going through your tribulations and your trouble, all right, for serving the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai, sincerely, all right, cleave unto him. All right, it's going to make you cleave unto him because you see the sufferings that you can't get rid of. All right, and the only way that you're going to uh, make it out of these sufferings is enduring to the end in this truth. All right, cleave unto him and depart not away that thou may be increased at thy last end. And that's why we're in the truth. All right, to be increased at our latter end, all right, which is the destruction of America to, the, to get delivered out of this upcoming destruction of America. Verse 4, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. And that's right, whatsoever is brought upon thee, because the Most High is balanced. we got to remember he's balanced, Proverbs 11 and 1. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight, roughly paraphrasing. So whatsoever is brought upon thee, he's not going to give you something that you can't handle. All right, And if he put hell on you, he's going to... Uh, make a way out according to the scriptures. So whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. No one can take um, fire put on them, all right, and take it cheerfully. When you put something in the fire, it's always going to cry, all right? I don't care how hard it is, all right? You put fire to something, it's going to make noise. Uh, Ezekiel 9 and 4 set a mark upon the foreheads that sigh and cry that, that's, uh, 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 of the abominations done in the midst thereof, roughly paraphrasing. That's us, that gold, all right, that the scripture speaks about being in that fire. But the scripture said, take it cheerfully, all right? So that means no one can just be happy that they're going through hell. Take it cheerfully as well. Continue in the work. Take it on the chin, all right? And know that, and, and like the scripture said, count it worthy, all right? Read on and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. That's catching hell. That's not prosperity, a lower state. All right, but be patient. All right, be patient to endure uh, uh, hard times and, and pain w without getting upset, to tolerate delay. All right, that's suffering, that's being patient, and it's also waiting. All right, verse five for gold is tried in the fire, so you don't throw anything in the fire, but if you do, uh, such as hay, stubble, as the scripture speaks of, tin. Wood, what's it? It's not going to make it through the fire. The fire is going to devour it, and that fire is symbolic for those temptations, those troubles that you're going to catch when you're sincerely serving Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and it's going to happen. All right, for gold is tried in fire because why? 
Lord willing, we be that gold. So you got to uh, try it. You got to set fire to it. Why? Renown and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity to be tried. Exactly. Okay. To be, to be uh, 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 established as an acceptable man of the most high. All right. To get that dross up off of you. Verse six, believe in him and he will help thee order thy way of right and trust in him. So when you're going through those temptations and those trials, know at the end of the day, it comes from Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. And know that that's the trial that's set up for you, the test that's set up for you. Because what? Why? You are sincerely serving the Lord. Okay. Let's get the book of Second Corinthians. Chapter 12. I'm going to start at verse 7. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse, start at verse 5. 2 Corinthians 12 and 5. All right. And this is Apostle Paul speaking, all right, of his trials and his tribulation, which is symbolic for us catching our trials and tribulation. All right. Matter of fact, let's just read 2 Corinthians 12 and 5. Of such one, of such and one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. All right, so Paul said he wouldn't glory in himself, but he would glory in the hell that he was catching, in his bodies, in his body, all right, uh, his infirmities. Verse 6, for though I would desire to glory, I should not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should take to think of me above that which he seemeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Verse 7, and lest I should be exalted above measure, though the abundance of the revelations. Yeah, that's what we have. We have the abundance of revelations. We are the ones that has woken up to the truth, the true uh, meaning of life, should, should I say, in these dark and gross and evil times, in these wicked times here in America. So we have the abundance of revelations just like Paul had then. Read known there, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. All right, that's the balance. Because you have these uh, uh, marvelous revelations. All right, you have the mysteries of the kingdom. You have the keys to salvation. It's not going to come that easy. All right, prepare thy soul. All right, for temptation will now come to serve the Lord. You're going to get a thorn in your side to balance it out. All right. And what's that thorn in the side? Something small uh, uh, set uh, to prick you or meant to prick you. Something you can't get rid of. It's a small thing, but it's worrying the shit out of you. All right. Read known the messenger of Satan to buffer me. See, that's the messenger of Satan above the Lord is balanced, man. He give he, he have given us these marvelous riches. And also he, he give you uh, hell to pay. Uh, in the midst of that because it's a balance you got to be tried you got to be made worthy you got to test your integrity all right to see are you worthy you do you really love him as you said you do are you willing to take this this fire all right because if you don't take this fire right now you're going to take some fire later so we rather take the fire now than to have that later fire which are those thermonuclear missiles lest i should be exalted above measure yeah to keep us humble man a key to the kingdom, because without that, a knowledge puff up, all right? And that leads to pride, and pride leads to destruction, all right? So it's a balance with Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah. Verse 8, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. So Paul said he went to the Lord three times to pray and, and to ask to take this thorn out of his side, all right? Verse 9, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, my grace is all right, is enough, man. My grace, all right, shall, shall satisfy you. All right, matter of fact, let's go into that word sufficient. Because the most I was telling Paul, even though I gave you a thorn in the side and you want this taken away from you, all right, my grace, all right, which is Yahweh Shah, and you having faith in Yahweh Shah, which leads to deliverance, is enough. This is that word sufficient in the Strong's G, the pronunciation. Strong's G714 Archeo. Archeo. All right, it says to to be possessed of unfailing strength. See? And that's what we have. Unveiling strength. To be strong, to be su suffice, to be enough. 
to defend outward, to be satisfied, to be content. See, that's our satisfaction, man. That's, that should have us content when we're going through these fiery trials, when we're going through the hell, all right, that's meant for us to have because we have abundant revelations of this truth, all right? So the grace of the Most High is enough, all right? The faith in Yahweh Shai, that, that, that's, that's enough to even ponder on when we're going through the hell, all right? That should, that should comfort you. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 again, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. All right, so the scripture said, be patient when thou change to a lower state, which is a weak state, all right? Which is uh, the strength of the most high through our weak state is made perfect because he's, did we say he take the foolish things of the world to conform the wise? We are the weak things of the world and we are conforming the wise. How? From through the abundance of the revelations, all right? Something that other people don't have, all right? That's why we must go through the fiery trials, all right? Renowned most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of a Mashiach may rest upon me. See, that's that balance. You got to have these infirmities. You got to go through your hell. All right. I always say if you're not catching hell and you claim to be in the truth, you need to check yourself. All right. Before you wreck yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like the songs say. All right. Because you, the hell got to come. And if you're not catching the hell, all right, you need to search yourself, man. All right, because the, the power of a Mashiach is not resting upon you. Okay. Verse 10, therefore I take pleasure in affirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecution and distresses for a Mashiach's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. See? So when you're at your highest point in this system, everything's going your way. That's not being strong, man. That's being being in a lower state for Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah's sake. That's being strong because the power of Yahweh Shah, all right, uh, uh, through his father shall be shown in you. Let's get out uh, of the book of Matthew, chapter 7, and verse 13. And this is that balance. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. That's right. That's why we need to enter in at the straight gate, which is a, a way of difficulty, man. A narrow, straight and narrow path being single-eyed. All right. And that's not an easy path. All right. But the scripture says, for wide is the for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Having fun, being prosperous in, in this world. All right. That leadeth to destruction. Which path shall you choose? All right, when you're catching hell, you're going to fall out of the truth? You're going to fall out of the truth just because you're catching a little hell? All right? I, I prefer the hell than to be a dummy, and, 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 or I prefer the hell than to be rich, which all of that leads to destruction. All right? And many there be which go in three. All right? So many uh, are, are on the path, or, or many are being missile bait, all right, because they're, they're prospering in this world. Verse 14, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. This, this straight and narrow path, this way of difficulty. And few there be that find it. So that's why we got a glory in catching hell. All right? Because we have a chance of salvation. All right? And it's a balance because why? We have these mysteries of the kingdom. We have the keys of the kingdom. We're supposed to catch hell. All right? It's a beautiful thing. It's a balance of Yahweh while Yahweh shot. All right? Let's get um let's get the book of Revelation, chapter 10. And verse 8. And this is when John of Patmos was receiving receiving the little book. And this is what we have done, received that little book. And these are the effects of receiving that little book. Revelation 10 and 8. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me. Again, and said, go and take the little book, which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up. All right. And that's what we have done. We have uh, uh, taken the little book, which is the King James Version. All right. And we have eaten it up, not literally chomped on the book. We have digested it in our spiritual man. 
All right. In our spiritual, we have digested the book, which is the understanding of the book. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Yeah, it's sweet, sweet in our mouth, man, knowing that we're Hebrew Israelites telling people that America's going to be destroyed. The white man's the devil. All right. Et cetera, et cetera. All that is sweet in our mouths, man. These beautiful riches of the kingdom. It's sweet. All right. To even speak of it. All right. It's sweet to know it. But the, the, the we have must take the bitter with the sweet and the sweet with the bitter. What's the bitter? The catching hell. Knowing that your, all your family, your so-called loved ones of the world, they're going to get destroyed. All right. If a person can't get this truth, regardless of their uh, uh, outer appearance or their outer ways or whatever, they're going to get destroyed. You're, we will get destroyed if we don't continue in this truth. All right, you're going to catch hell. You're not going to prosper being in this truth. All right, that's the bitter and the sweet. All right, verse 10, and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. All right, but that's a beautiful thing, because why? That leads to salvation. We must catch hell right now to receive glory. All right, matter of fact, uh... Let's get that. Um, matter of fact, before I get that, let's get the book of James, chapter 1, and verse 12, because it's a reward for catching all this here. Remember, it's always a reward. There's always a reward. You know, that one penny, that, that's what we're in this for, the reward. All right? James 1 and 12, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, endureth to the end. All right? The same shall be saved, roughly paraphrasing the book of St. Matthew, chapter 24. For when he is tried, there it is, that tried, what's that tried again? That fire, that thorn in the side, that hell that you're catching. He shall receive the crown of life. See, it's a reward. Matter of fact, before we continue, let's go into this word temptation because I want one definition out of temptation. What is temptation? All right, it's a lot of things, but I want to get this one definition that's under temptation. This is the word temptation in James 1 and 12, the pronunciation in the Strong's G. 